Turning our attention now to the state of Colorado, where defendant Letitia Stalk seems to have tried everything to distance herself from the murder of her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon. This morning, we'll hear from her again. As Stalk gave several versions of events about what happened to little 11-year-old Gannon, even making herself a rape victim in one of them. She told her husband that she would take a lie detector test, too. She, we know, fled thousands of miles all the way to Florida to dump that child's body that she put in a suitcase, by the way. Now she's claiming not guilty by reason of insanity. And the jury heard a lot of her lies come out during those recorded phone calls that are being introduced as evidence, as evidence in this case. Uh, they were done between her and her now ex-husband, Al Stauk, little Gannon's father. And on Friday, the jury heard more lies when prosecutors played her recorded interview with the FBI. Take a listen. I can help you because what you're charging me with is not, or whoever, is not the case. Okay. Gannon is alive, okay, and I can help you. Okay, great. But see, here's the problem. When I reached out to people about getting help, I said, hey, I need someone who's going to help me to help you guys. I couldn't get that from me at all. We're happy to help you. Okay. So I understand you might say you have, like, whatever evidence that you might say you have, but that's not a case. It did not hurt my child. Okay. I need more assistance besides the FBI. You're probably going to need some DBA. You probably need a lot, a lot of help. Well, I'm happy to get whatever help. Okay. How do you know? But I can't to... help you unless people are willing to help me. And I did offer every opportunity to sit down and talk with not only my husband, but with Landon to try to come up with the best plan to do. I really did. And I've been begging every single day, please, please, please don't think this. Okay. You, I know you're expert in your field, okay? I know you may say you have whatever evidence you have, but it's just not true, okay? Not. It's not true that Gannon's dead? I'm not going to sit here and say 100%. I can tell you that there's really things that wouldn't have occurred that I can help you guys with to know that. And it leads back to some things just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's, that's the truth. Okay. That is the very truth. Oh, let's listen to some more truth now. We've got another clip from that interview. And to be clear, this is at the point in time where investigators still haven't found little Gannon's body. And so here in this clip, she's talking about her role within the Stauk family and the role that she plays and the whole family dynamic. Let's watch. And you guys have been married six years, five years? Five years. Five years. And you came to the marriage with Harley. Right. And then the lane is the youngest. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we had like maybe I think four or five went to like kind of midterm this year just because we always try to like have kids and I don't know like something must have happened like when I get to a certain point. Like, what a bit more kids. Right. But, yeah. Do you think I was faithful to you? Was he cheating on you? Um I don't like I never we never had like any conversation until like of course now like recently but like prior to that we never had like a um like buses or it might be something like I work type person when he got work he just liked to come home he wasn't like um, oh I'm gonna go do this with people he just wasn't that was a good part because he wasn't you know like not saying you can't like I'm sure you might say if a football game is going you know, watch a different Right. Usually, for the most part, we do it like do it together, do something together. But it was never really like having our own people that we did things with. But we never like had issues of anything like that. Most of the time, the issues that we always had was I never wanted the kids to ever come back here. A lot of times, during their break, and we begin. But. He would always say, well, I have to, I'm obligated. It is astounding to me at how these moms, Letitia Stauk and Lori Vallow-Daybell, are able to lie so smoothly and convincingly. Let me bring in my guests, see what they think. Trial attorney C.K. Hoffler and prosecuting attorney Anton Bell on the show this morning. Anton, let me go to you first on this one, please. Uh, if you 
We're given the assignment of prosecuting Letitia Stauk, uh, knowing she's going uh, with the not guilty by reason of insanity defense. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you would fashion your case against her, please. Well, first of all, under Colorado law, you have to have a mental defect or disease that renders you incapable of being able to distinguish right from wrong if you're going to be found insane uh, uh, for a particular crime. In this particular case, it's kind of hard for you to be able to say I'm insane when you have lie after lie after lie toppled with manipulation calculating strategies where you're talking first to Al and you're trying to negotiate with him to, for him to help you. And basically all you're doing is trying to get information out of him as to where the investigation is. And then when you're talking to the FBI and to the police, you're actually negotiating with them saying, hey, I'll help you find where uh, Gannon is if someone will basically look out for me basically make sure I'm good. And so this is not a caring parent who is worried about the welfare of their child. This is a person who is doing things, have done things, have killed, stabbed this guy, stabbed this kid, shot this kid, got rid of him, drove miles and miles away to get rid of him, came back, and then you, you got caught in so many lies that you just cut coming up with them. And so now she has so many lies, we can't even keep up with them. We can't <laughs> even count them. It's just unreal. So I will put every lie in front of that jury, every manipulation in front of that jury, and then I will take it home with, is this really an insane person or is this a master manipulator? And that's who you have sitting before you, a master manipulator. Isn't that the truth? I love it, Anton. Would you put them up on the big screen, maybe number them, Absolutely. the lies? Oh, yeah. Make them crystal clear for that jury. I love it. Uh, C.K. Hoffler, tell me, you know, to Anton's point about how in Colorado, the defendant has to have a diagnosed mental disease or defect, and her team has put forth dissociative identity disorder, which used to be known as multiple personality disorder. Mm -hmm. And I can't mm. wait to see who they call because... Every expert we've had on, uh, whether it's a psychiatrist expert or, you know, forensic psychologist, they've all said there is no way this defense is going to fly. It's just not uh, going to go over before this jury. And um, and I keep thinking, oh, my, um, you know, if, if they're all saying the same thing, I mean, I haven't found one yet to disagree and say, ah, yes, this could do it. Um, do you think this trial is more like a, if these experts who've been on our air are right, do you you think it's almost like a slow plea, so to speak, like a foregone conclusion with this woman? Or do you think maybe she does have a chance before this jury? You know, Julie, I don't think she has a shot at all. She has absolutely no chance of, in my impression, of being acquitted. The evidence is so astounding against her. This is just a heinous crime. I agree with Antoine, Anton's analysis. I mean, she is a master manipulator. And jurors really take exception to people who lie. And she's lied so much. And I would have the entire courtroom with all these lies. I'd have an exhibit board that would really go across the entire courtroom <laughs> as large as that judge would allow oh, me I to I love do. it. Yes. I wouldn't let that jury think for a moment, not a nanosecond, that she's anything other than a liar and a mastermind. And she masterminded this and it was intentional and she killed this child. And I would focus on she killed this little baby, this child. So that's how I would try this case if I were the prosecutor. And I wouldn't let anything. I don't, it doesn't matter what expert comes in that room and, and, and talks about all these personalities. People who have, and I am familiar just from trying cases with these types of disorders, the evidence is very different, presents in a very different way than what we see in this case. So I don't think that she has a shot, Julie, at all. I don't think it's credible. I think that the witnesses will not be credible. And I think this jury is just going to go basically with their common sense. A lie plus a lie equals, guess what? A lie. And I love that's it. what she is. Preach, <laughs> CK. Preach. Yes, I'm with you both. And as you're both talking, you both just, uh, an idea came to me. You know, we're, we're all three on the same page of how, you know, we would try to put those lies up for the jury to see. And as, as you're both talking, it dawned on me, you know what? I think the key to the case is also the timing of the lies because if they put you know on their boards around the courtroom like CK wants to do or Anton with the electronic you know projection for them to see however you do it if you put the times down then the jury would see that the only time she claims to have been like 
<laughs> not having the wherewithal to know right from wrong or appreciate her actions would have been the time she was stabbing that child 18 times and shooting him uh, in his bed. I mean, it, it's just, uh, it is so sickening, um, as uh, many of these cases are, uh, as you both know.